Tonight on Canyons News, a new Metrolink Center opens in the Santa Clarita Valley. Local families come together to show their pride at a picnic. And finally, a look at an unconventional sport that is helping the veteran community. Canyons News starts now. With news from across the Santa Clarita Valley, this is Canyons News. Hello everyone and welcome to Canyons News. I'm Natalie Perez and here's the latest from the Canyons Newsroom. As the local transit worker strike enters its third week, union members made a stop at City Hall. Dozens of union members were at a city council meeting last night. They were there asking local government to get involved in the negotiations. The meeting was also attended by several members of the community whose daily lives have been impacted. Since the strike, I've had to depend on the kids and other people to push me around campus. My mom has to come get me on the second floor and take me down to the elevator when it's time to go. That might not sound like a big deal, but it is. Another public transportation update as the Vista Canyon Metrolink Center is finally here. Reporter Asia Haskin takes us behind the new addition to the Antelope Valley Line. That's the sound of a new future for Santa Clarita Valley commuters. The Metrolink station in Vista Canyon is open for service. The Vista Canyon Multimodal Center will serve the Southern California Regional Rail Authority Metrolink Antelope Valley Line, which runs between Lancaster and Los Angeles Union Station. Making it Santa Clarita's fourth Metrolink station. Also built were eight bus transit bays, which the city believes will ease congestion on roadways. Construction began three years ago, but the man behind it will tell you it was 20 years in the making. Well, it, it is a big relief, I have to admit. It's, it's something that I didn't really know if it could ever happen just because of all the things that had to come together. We got sued for three and a half years and ultimately settled that. And then you get to go build the thing. Walking through the station, passengers will find pieces of history to look back on, much like this one. Contributions made by the estimated 1,000 Chinese laborers who would lay the tracks and work on that 7,000 foot tunnel that connects San Francisco to Los Angeles in what is now the New Hall Pass. While paying tribute to its past, the city is also focused on the future for the Santa Clarita Valley. The Vista Canyon Multimodal Center is a project that was in the Santa Clarita 2025 strategic plan and supports the goal of enhancing economic vitality by expanding transit services to our underserved areas. And residents in Vista Canyon can expect more to come. Starting next year, the city is going to build a bridge over the river to connect to Soledad. So then we kind of have the last big link of infrastructure. For Canyon's News, I'm Asia Haskin. Actors of SAG AFTRA are in unscripted territory as their strike against the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers has reached over a hundred days. There was some hope for a resolution around the time the writer's strike ended. However, members remain on the picket lines as negotiations resumed yesterday. The union, the union has encouraged its members to remain determined in these trying times. As the strike continues, Hollywood professionals are trying to create real-life scares for Halloween. Evan Avora gives us a look at how these professionals are staying busy. With Halloween on the way, locals looking for a scare can find them in Valencia. They were out gardening them one day. They found this giant carrot in their garden. They pulled it out and somehow it opened a portal. Opened a portal to another dimension. Dimension where rabbits experiment on humans. These special effects artists, prop makers, and costume designers, they all work in the entertainment industry, but there hasn't been much work to do since the strike months ago. They're all very thankful to be doing it. They have something to do to be creative. These people have been sitting at home, losing their houses, drinking, doing all kinds of things, and this has given them kind of a fresh breath of error, you know, for all of us. That's why they have grown this grizzly garden, so that they can use all these talented individuals to create something special for the holidays. That shining hallway is mine. I'm like, I don't care what we do, but we're putting a shining hallway in. <laughs> so we got some of the best industry people in the world working at this haunt. 
and going to make it so frightening that for the rest of your life, you're going to remember this. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> yeah. All are welcome to the garden if they are brave enough. They even have a jump scare free version of the attraction from 5 to 6 p.m. for the kids. We walk them through and tell a little story. You now, what's like in the Grizzly Garden uh, if we cover up all the scary stuff? But for those willing to step foot in this haunted house, be warned, there's no turning back. <laughs> for Canyons News, I'm Edward Avora. With an in-depth look at some of the important news happening around the global and in the Santa Clarita Valley, here's Katherine Brook with What's Trending. Thank you, Natalie. Here's a look at What's Trending. Following the Israel airstrikes that reportedly killed more than 700 people and shut down the hospitals in the Giza Strip earlier this week, UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez called for an immediate ceasefire to the conflict. Gutierrez referenced a violation of international law an easier delivery of aid in his appeal to end the area's, quote, epic suffering. Eight trucks of humanitarian aid were allowed into Giza late Tuesday, but more than 20 trucks have been unable to cross. The death toll has risen to 2,630 children and 1.4 million Palestinians fleeing their homes since the conflict erupted on October 7th, following Hamas's attack on Israel. Israel's UN envoy, Gilad Erdan, has called the Secretary General to resign following his comment on, quote, the Hamas attack did not happen in a vacuum. Israel's foreign minister since canceled a meeting with Gutierrez. In national news, Louisiana Republican Mike Johnson unanimously won the election for the Speaker of the House after three weeks ago, Representative Kevin McCarthy was historically ousted due to the handling of the government shutdown. The party's fourth nominee, had a candidacy lasting only four hours, with Johnson earning all 220 Republican votes and is already taking steps dealing with the Israel-Hamas conflict and providing of aid. Johnson has also proposed plans regarding the upcoming expiration of government funding on November 17th. In local news, a police pursuit that began in Palmdale ended in Canyon Country yesterday morning. According to law enforcement, the suspect is being investigated for assaulting an officer. The chase lasted about 30 minutes and ended when the suspect crashed their vehicle in Canyon Country. The pursuit continued on foot until the suspect was caught and arrested at the shopping center on White's Canyon and Soledad Canyon Road. And that's what's trending. I'm Catherine Brooke. For more stories in and around the Santa Cruz Valley, you can check us out at canyonsnews.com. Back to you, Natalie. The annual garden walk hosted at COC's Canyon Country Campus had students taking a walk in the early morning sun to see wildlife through a new lens. Members of the Santa Clarita Valley packed up their picnic baskets for an evening of fun and color. On October 15th, allies and members of the LGBTQ community gathered in Stevenson Ranch to celebrate Pride with a picnic open to all. So the Santa Clarita Valley Pride Picnic is essentially a family-friendly celebration of the local LGBTQ community. Uh, we started in 2019, and since the population here, the demographics tend to be families with young children or um, same-sex couples. We have arts and crafts and like games and stuff like that, as opposed to the more oons oons version of Pride that exists out there. <laughs> The Santa Clarita Valley Pride Picnic not only provides support and entertainment, but creates a family that members of the community can connect to. I'm both transgender and bisexual, and uh, I find a lot of fellowship here, and uh, it's, it's just really wonderful and liberating to find other people like myself. With local vendors coming out to the event, their hopes are to show the community that they are not alone. My hope and my belief is that it will suddenly become not so weird or not so uncomfortable in Santa Clarita and everywhere else to be who you are out in the open and not behind your doors or at your particular clubs that you can just walk down and hold the hand of the person you love without fear of any repercussions. For Canyons News, I'm Shalisa Curlpen. The annual Garden Walk, hosted at COC's Canyon Country Campus, had students taking a walk in the early morning sun to see wildlife through a new lens. If you listen closely, if you watch closely, you might just catch a glimpse. 
the College of the Canyons Canyon Country Campus hosted the annual Garden Walk for students and community members interested in taking a closer look at the wildlife surrounding the school. There's a fun component to it. Uh, we do uh, something extra each time. This time we're going to be doing bird watching. So Jeannie brings a lot of uh, binoculars with her and she, we supply the binoculars and we do a little bird watching as we walk around campus to identify the types of birds that are flying around our campus. The walk, led by Professor Jeannie Shari, gave participants the opportunity to understand the biodiversity on campus and appreciate the scenery. The focus is on appreciation, right? Because we share this space with many different organisms and sometimes on a day to day, we don't even notice them. We don't even know that they're here. And so sometimes when you can see pe one peeking out of a bush and you see something that you've never seen before, then you can begin to coexist because you even know that they're there. Ha ha, that's why they're called roadrunners. <laughs> Participants were also treated to facts about the plant life on campus and how it affects the wildlife. This is terrible for the reptiles. Oh. It becomes a good discussion, almost like a, a, a mini outdoor classroom that's kind of moving around the campus. Um, so we're learning, we're having fun, we're meeting people, and uh, the community gets a chance kind of to see what we're all about too, that we're doing some pretty cool things here on campus. For Canyons News, I'm Natalie Perez. The breeze of nature was the highlight to disconnect with electronic devices and to reconnect with people. That is the mission for the recreational management. Canyons News reporter Christopher Casey takes us to where the relaxation was. With the fire crackling and people taking their time outside, it brings together a community of people who enjoy being outside in nature. That is what the recreational management here at COC wanted to accomplish with their Dis to Reconnect event. So the Disconnect to Reconnect idea has kind of been a conversation we've had through the pandemic that we really need to get away from our offices and our classrooms and get outdoors and reconnect with ourselves, but also with the natural environment and with those in our community. The event brought in many interested people and staff sitting around the fire and making some s'mores or even helping out during that time. One of the helpers is one of our own counselors and also being an adjunct faculty member of the recreational management, Gary Hooper. This event really came about because of our uh, department chair, Brittany Applin, wanting to create a program that brought our students outside during the day at COC to take advantage of games and relaxation, food, and create a social environment for folks to get off their phones and kind of disconnect. It isn't just the staff that was also helping and enjoying their time during the whole event. Alex Wing was a part of the team helping around and having a blast for what was being offered at that time. Uh, it taught me how to have a positive impact on the community and wanting to spread, your, spread yourself out there so people know that you're there. If you're interested with any of the things that the recreational management has to offer, then please contact Brittany Amplin or go to one of our COC counselors for more information. For Canyons News, I'm Christopher Casey. When we return from the break, Shalisa Kralpan will be taking over and giving us a further look at more local news. Thank you, Natalie. Here's a quick look at the latest from the Canyons News team. We take a look at some exciting football highlights. And we learn how underwater sports are bringing veterans together. Stay tuned. In a home fire, can your family safely escape in two minutes? I heard my oldest son holler for mommy and all I could see was smoke. The boys, we never really worked with them, I guess, on telling them what to do if there's a fire. We lost our child. We lost everything. Make sure you can safely escape a fire. Practice your two-minute drill. Test your smoke alarms monthly. Make your plan today. The future is yours. So let College of the Canyons help you get ready, reset, and go for it. Get ready for transfer, the workforce, or take your skills to the next level. Reset your career and get back to work quickly. Go to college for $46 per unit, zero textbook cost class options, and apply for your share of financial aid. With convenient class times, flexible on-campus or online options, and free tutoring, the future is yours at College of the Canyons. Visit canyons.edu slash schedule. Welcome back. I'm Shalisa Curlpun, and here's the latest from the Canyons News. How often can you say that you know someone who designed their room like a museum? Reporter Kyle Kawamato shows us one room frozen in time. 
This here is um, Carol Lagasse. Time is moving quickly, but for one house in Valencia, there's a room where time stands still. What you see here is an artifact dating back to the early 1900s, a piece of history where you normally find in a museum. But in fact, it is here in this room. And it all started from childhood curiosity. Growing up here in the Santa Clarita Valley, you know, I want to know it was in our backyard. Our teacher had asked us to do a community service project, and I said, well, why not the SCV Historical Society? Because that's where our history is. At an instant, Evan was in love, volunteering 11 years and giving back by sharing historical knowledge within the valley. This was built in the 1890s. It all began with two photographs, dating back to the beginning of the 20th century. And one by one, the room began to take shape. The lower photo in the frame and then this panoramic, those are photos of the uh, Newhall Fourth of July Parade from 1936. Those were kind of the first, I guess, things that I acquired. Inspirations can hit at an instant. For him, it's the beginning of the day. I wake up in the morning and well, this picture over here of William S. Hart and Amelia Earhart. I mean, you can't get any more inspirational slash famous than them. A lot of what she has now given, passed on to me. Yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of stuff. The room has become one giant historical textbook with artifacts becoming more brittle, but aging like wine. You can see here we have, like for example, this is the old Mitchell School. While having a majority of Santa Cruz heirlooms, Evan also adds some of his own family history to the archives and has plans for the future. You know, contributing my own personal history or my own family history to that, I think is interesting to me because eventually I'll, you know, donate that stuff. And so it's just those things that, those connections that make me, you know, want to learn and eventually to retell those stories. You know? With one look at the room, almost anyone can get lost with a photograph, a book, or even a rock. All these artifacts with their own story to tell. Reporting from Valencia, I'm Kyle Kawamoto. If you like waking up to a warm cup of coffee in the rev of an engine, there's good news for you. Reporter Nareh Sharkadian has the story of a local event that only happens once a month. A sunny Saturday morning on the corner of Valencia Boulevard and Creekside Road calls for cars and coffee. The Porsche dealership in Santa Clarita has brought in drivers from all around to their cars and coffee event on the first Saturday of every month. The monthly event that started a few years ago has grown to be a well-known car show for the locals in Santa Clarita. But more than just exotic cars, why do the people really love an event like this? It brings everyone together and it's like the great uniter. You can walk up and talk to anybody with any car or any interest on it, young and old. With the reputation that Porsche holds and the cars they make, it's no surprise that people love checking out the cars from up close. And what about our friends that want to get behind the wheel? While attendees were behind the wheel in the main floor of the dealership, everyone's eyes were on the cars that were fenced off. When asked about his favorite part of the dealership, one attendee was quick to answer. Definitely the downstairs area, they had the, the race cars and all the older Porsches and I thought that those, I like classic cars more than I do the newer ones, so I enjoyed that part probably the most. In the bottom floor of the dealership, also known as the Wonderground, there was a collection of classic and exotic cars. People were able to see a piece of both Porsche past and present. In this large garage of history, there's no room for lemons. Instead, people explore a vast collection of the finest cars in the building but that same level of excellence carries over into the lot. A community event that brings the people together, what's not to love about cars and coffee? For Canyons News, I'm Nautic Charkhadyan. Local farmers markets are full of vendors who have unique products to sell and even more unique life stories to tell. Reporter Jaden Johnson has more. The Old Town New Hall Farmer's Market occurs every Saturday, cultivating a variety of different products and vendors, all with their own stories of who they are and how their businesses came to be. This is especially true for Michael Parks and Louis Diaz, an unlikely duo who sharpen knives and make handmade cutting boards, respectively. I was a NASA engineer and I got let go. And uh, after being there for 20 years, and you know, I had to reinvent myself. 
friend of mine was a butcher and said, you ought to learn how to sharpen knives. I can use you here. Having no other source of income, Michael would come to farmer's markets and sharpen knives in his van, which he would continue to do for the next 15 years. Along the way, he met Louis Diaz, who has the talent of creating these cutting boards not only by hand, but as a completely blind man. I lost my sight at the age of two. Uh, and growing up, I've always loved the fa uh, fact that you can build things out of wood. My dad has a shutter factory down in the valley. Um, and growing up, I've always been faced with, I don't know if you should be doing A, B, or C because you can't see. Um, and that's always motivated me to prove people wrong. Learning the entire detailed process of creating these boards on his own, Louis comes to the farmer's market every Saturday as his side hustle. So I come here and share a booth with Michael and you know, there's just great people here. It attracts a lot of, a lot of residents of the Santa Cruz Valley and it's a great place for me to get the word out about what I do. For Canyons News, I'm Jaden Johnson. Studies have shown that cancer is becoming more and more of a common occurrence here in the U.S. You may have been affected by it through a loved one or someone you know. Sander Grable gives us a deeper dive into a local company that helps these patients through a trying time in their lives. Circle of Hope is a local nonprofit organization that supports those going through cancer in our community. Their 19th annual tea event was held last Saturday to raise funds for their main pillars of support, which include financial, educational, and emotional assistance. This event is our 19th annual Circle Hope Tea. We historically have this during the month of October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, when we started in 2004, our organization was focused on solely breast cancer, mostly women. Now it's expanded. We have a physical location on Lyons Avenue, a cancer support center, and we support men, women, all cancers, all stages. With growing rates of cancer around the world, more and more people are finding themselves lost and in need of a support group. We have new people come in our center every day that need help, that need support. So living here and, you know, we all have people that have touched our lives, either we live with or that have passed away with cancer. Um, so I think it's a big part of giving back to people who are vulnerable and need support in our local community. Circle of Hope is run by a staff of volunteers who have each been individually affected by cancer one way or another. Okay, so several years ago, 2014, I lost my mom to cancer and I knew that when we moved to California that I wanted to get involved with something that had to do with helping cancer patients. So that's why I got involved. 31 Days of Hope inspires members of the community to do their part in giving back. Proceeds that are raised through these fundraisers go back to Circle of Hope and help with assisting yeah, cancer patients with co-pays, second opinions, and other financial assistance. 31 Days of Hope is um, in October. We have this every year and we raise money and we partner with the community, different restaurants, different organizations, different um, businesses partner with us and they give us a percentage of their sales throughout the month of October to raise money for our cancer clients. Reporting for Canyons News, I'm Xander Grable. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Report Julianne Lena shows us how one local fundraiser is raising awareness to the cause. Last Saturday, on October 14th, you may have seen crowds of purple along Center Point Parkway. At the Purple Palooza 5K walk, over 400 people gathered to raise awareness for survivors of domestic and child abuse. The Child and Family Center in Santa Clarita raised over $60,000 for their domestic violence program. Every October, Cheryl Jones is excited to coordinate an event that provides so much help for those who are trying to find a way out. So survivors that, it can be multiple, so they come here for group um, counseling. So they may still be in their home, um, but they just want to figure out, okay, so my relationship isn't really going the way I thought it should be. So they're learning how to improve their relationships and then in, in improve their lives as a result. Hundreds of people and furry friends gathered in purple attire to let domestic abuse survivors know they are not alone. For Malika Spencer, purple is a color that is special to her, as she wears it for her mother. 
My mom's been gone for about seven years now, but I just want to raise awareness to physical abuse, you know, sexual abuse, domestic violence, you know, financial abuse. Domestic violence is under this big spectrum, but it's just like, it's good to know early, like the signs of what your family members may be going through. So that's why I'm here today for my mom. For Canyons News, I'm Julian Lena. Next, Sam Rabati joins us from the Canyons News Sports Desk. Hi, Sam. Did Cougar football maul another opponent? Hi, Shalisa. I definitely have those highlights and so much more because we had a big couple days of sports take place, so there's a lot of action to catch you up on. But yes, let's first start with CLC football. On a hot Saturday afternoon, the Cougars faced off against the Allen Hancock Bulldogs, and this one was a shootout. CLC would start off the scoring when wide receiver Josh Clark hauls in this pass from quarterback Emery Floyd and takes it 77 yards to the house. The two teams would go into halftime tied 21-21. Early third quarter now with the Bulldogs up 28-21 and they would add to their lead when running back Caden Harris goes untouched for a 70-yard touchdown run to make the score 35-21. But the Cougars would show their teeth and battle back to take the lead 45-42 when Josh Clark takes it up the gut for an 18-yard touchdown run with 1 minute and 35 seconds left in the fourth quarter. But at the top, I told you this one was a shootout and one CLC would lose in heartbreaking fashion when quarterback Jackson Claywell connects with wide receiver Collins Petaway on a 76-yard catch and run. The loss snaps College of the Canyons four-game winning streak. Obviously, we gotta we gotta pick it up, and, and the critical mistakes that we made in the kicking game, on defense, on offense, turnovers, and, and explosive plays that we allowed. Um, it's just not a, it's not typical of our team, and obviously, we gotta watch film and get back to work on Monday. The main thing we should have been doing is execution. Execution was was not there today in all in all aspects, defensively, offensively, special teams. It just comes down to little things. With a four and three record now on the season, the Cougars will look to bounce back next week when they head to Moore Park. Now let's turn our attention to high school football, where the Valencia Vikings took on the Heart High Indians, with Valencia looking to take a step closer to winning the league championship. And you just knew that both Valencia and Hart would be ready for this one, for this rivalry game. After a Valencia field goal to open the game, Hart would take an early 7-3 lead on this passing touchdown from Hart quarterback Tim Larkins to wide receiver Scott Morris. Valencia would respond with a touchdown of their own as quarterback Jackson Askins finds wide receiver Nick Seymour, putting Valencia back on top 10-7, and the Vikings would never look back. Here, Askins scrambles down the middle of the field for a 17-7 lead. Now late in the third, Askins would toss his third touchdown of the game with this dime to running back Brian Bonner to go up 30-7 and running back Gabe Magdaleno would then cap off a dominating 37-7 victory over Hart. They rallied up, they hung tough, and uh, uh, did an outstanding job of, of kind of raising to the occasion. So just unbelievably pr uh, proud of them and humbled by their effort. So now all Valencia has to do is beat Canyon next week, and they will clinch their 12th Foothill League Championship in the last 15 years. The COC men's soccer team had a back and forth battle with conference rival Glendale last night. Coming off three straight losses, the Cougars were looking to break their streak of misfortunes and set the tone early. But it was Glendale who attacked the goal early and capitalized off a COC miscue to take an early 1-0 lead. With Glendale still coming on strong and pressuring the Cougar side of the field, Glendale struck again and commanded a 2-0 lead less than 10 minutes into the match. In the 30th minute, the Cougars answered back with a goal of their own from midfielder Andrew Montez to cut the lead in half. In the second half of the game, the Cougars ambushed Glendale with another goal from Andrew Montez to tie the game at two apiece in the 57th minute. Things got chippy later in the game with Glendale earning a yellow card and some pushing and shoving. This one wound up in a 2-2 draw. I think both teams conducted themselves well. Um, I think the referees did an, an adequate job um, in that situation. Um, you know, would have liked to seen a little bit more added on time at the end because there was a lot of injuries and, and you know, but that's life. Uh, we made the mistakes, we paid for it, we corrected it, we got a draw. Uh, I think that's fair and we'll move on. As the COC women's soccer team is sliding into the last few games of the season, Jonathan Garcia takes a look at how the Lady Cougars are performing. 
The Glenda Vaqueros faced off the Lady Cougars last night for COC's ninth consecutive conference game of the season. Eight of those nine games for the Cougars have been dominant wins, along with one tie and no losses. COC's offense has been on fire, scoring a plus 39 point differential against their opponents within those nine games. The defensive side of the ball was just as dominant, with takeaways all throughout the game. As the first half of the game was coming to a close, middle fielder Giselle Gomez scores this beautiful up and over score in the 40th minute of the game. As Gomez earned her third goal of the season, that's only one of many focuses that keeps this team's momentum going. We focus a lot of defense in our practices. We try to stay really compact, and that's what we really focus on like throughout most of our practices. So. And with practice makes perfect, the Lady Cougars would open up opportunities for their offense to continue scoring. With Jesse Bondsness scoring in the 58th minute and Alyssa Edwards scoring in the 59th minute, as for the rest of the team, you could say defense definitely wins championships. Our defensive line's very organized in the back. Um, the biggest thing is, I think, just that we're keeping the ball, though. It's the, the possession. So actually, our attack is, is our best defense, you know, the amount of time we spend in possession of the ball. With COC's 3-0 win, they look to earn their ninth win this Friday at home against West L.A. For Canyons News, I'm Jonathan Garcia. Holding an undefeated conference title so far this season is COC's very own women's soccer program. One of those coaching the team to victory is coach Ellen Blankenship, who continues to score goals on the field and in the wide bracket of players she connects with. Our reporter Catherine Brook brings us this coach's spirited impact. Toning the technical That's skill the of her players, so and more importantly, their too, character. Right? And Coach Ellen's genuine connection to, to each individual player, rises her team up while fueling another goal. I want them to love the game, but I also want them to take the lessons from the game and be able to apply it to real life. This journey of shaping the people behind the athlete started long before when she, like many of her players today, competed for Saugus High School, and later, for the Pomona Pitzer team, where she found her love for teaching others. So when I was at college, I actually coached a little kids team with my friend. And then when I came back and started teaching, I wanted to coach because I wanted to be part of the game. And be a part of the game she has. Throughout her career, Ellen took on the title of head coach at her alma mater. And today, she is focused on COC's women's soccer program and her club teams, one of which she coaches with COC head coach Justin London. Knowledge she's able to shift gears based on the developmental needs of, of the players if it goes from college to you know where these girls are freshmen in high school. Whether a youth athlete on one of coaches legends club teams or a college recruit for COC's undefeated conference women's soccer program the power of this coach's involvement is easy to see. I turn around and her and two of the freshmen in high school are, are doing handstands and Coach Ellen's actually doing a headstand and teaching these young girls how to do that. So, you know, she's able to connect with them in that role, but also come down and be on their level and connect with them in that way. Deeply rooted, this mission is Coach Ellen's way of thanking those who supported her. Just how grateful I am for all the people that have been there in the past for me, and I just hope I can pay that forward. Through athletics, you can do that, right? You can hopefully do that, make some kind of positive impact in your life. For Canyons News, I'm Catherine Brooke. The COC Athletics Department recently unveiled the newly renamed Lee Smeltzer Basketball Court. Smeltzer was recognized for his legendary 30-year career as the men's basketball coach. He coached the very first season of men's basketball for COC back in 1969 and led the Cougars until retiring in 2000. Congratulations, Coach. You may have heard of the Rose Bowl or the Super Bowl, but have you heard of the Aqua Bowl? Underwater Torpedo is a relatively new sport with a unique origin story, and I share more with you. Right about now, you might be asking yourself, what is this? This is Underwater Torpedo, 
and it was founded six years ago by two ex-Marines, Special Ops. You take water polo, right, and you have the big nets at the surface, and you shrink those nets and take them down to the bottom of the pool at 13 feet, and five on five with that, right? You have to score at the bottom of the pool. The first team to five goals wins the game, and matches are best out of three. And today, the title of Aqua Bowl champions is up for grabs. But before there can be winners, there must first be a spark. Underwater Torpedo League originated from a game called Underwater Football that we used to play as a survival training game, in the a water survival training technique and game in the Marines. Why is this not a sport? That's what we were thinking in 2009. Fast forward to um, you know several deployments in special operations, both me and Don. We, we both got out in 2017. We put our heads together and this is what we came up with. Putting their heads together is nothing new. Both men worked with one another as water survival instructors at Camp Pendleton and saw firsthand the physical commitment needed to survive extreme water conditions. So they devised a similar strategy to get athletes interested in the league in shape. The Deep End Fitness program, we teach people how to, you know, non-swimmers, how to be confident in the water, how to survive first before we even teach you how to swim. You know, and that comes from the military background, like, hey, if I was thrown off a ship right now, you know, what would happen? Would I know how to survive? Would I know how to tread water? Would I know how to find people to help me, support me? One, two, three, good And support is a crucial element of the culture Don and Prime have built. Guys coming out of the military, they lose that sense of community as soon as they leave, right? They lose their identity in a certain way where, you know, they don't know where else to kind of come to. So they can come to a place, they can collaborate, they can work together, they can push the limits together, challenge each other you know and be in a competitive environment but it's not just the competition that's a benefit it's such an amazing tool for people to kind of change their mindset and push past so many different obstacles within the habit within their own mind from anxiety depression stress management you know and like that's a tool that we want to make sure that the people understand in the world that they can use to help these things instead of like taking you know antidepressants and, and all these pills both men felt a sense of duty when they enlisted now Don and Prime have found a new calling. For Canyons News, I'm Sam Rabati. That does it for this edition of Canyons News. I'm Sam Rabati. Remember, you can catch us on the web at canyonsnews.com. You can also send us news tips and story ideas to our Twitter handle, canyonsnews underscore coc, and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Have a good night, everybody.